Hey guys, today we're gonna learn to use the PowerShell tool Red Rabbit to dump saved Wi-Fi passwords, among other things, on this episode of Cyber Weapons Lab. Hey guys, you may not have seen me before. I am Tim, I am a freelance software developer, and today I'm gonna to show you guys how to use the tool Red Rabbit. So Red Rabbit is created by a guy called Secure the Logs. He makes a plethora of uh, Windows-based uh, ethical hacking and penetration testing tools. So um, one thing to note is that you're gonna, uh, this is a post-exploitation tool, so you're going to need to have administrator access in order to use this. If you don't have administrator access, but you would like to get it, that is a topic called privilege escalation. And if you want to learn more about that, and you also want to see more a more in-depth description of this tool, go ahead and look at the uh, article, which is linked in the description. So in order to use Red Rabbit, all you're going to need is uh, a machine running Windows. You're going to need the latest version of PowerShell and um, internet connection. So let's get started. Okay, so this is Secure the Logs website. Um, this is his post for Red Rabbit. Um, this is what it's supposed to look like, and a link to his the GitHub page. And then there's a breakdown of all the different options that this tool offers. Um, we're going to go over a few of the um, most interesting ones: um, Quick Recon, some of the password, some of the the brute forcing zip, and then the password dumping one. All right, so let's go to his GitHub. And then what we're interested in is the PowerShell script file, which he updated three days ago. Okay, let's open a PowerShell window. PowerShell. You're going to want to open it in administrator mode. You can obviously just do right click run as administrator. What I like to do is um, control shift and then enter. Control shift in Windows when you open something will open it in administrator mode. Okay, so there's a few ways we can download this script. The most obvious way is to use the commandlet invoke web request. Um, and then you would do the URI, you would do some URL, you would do an out file, the out file command and tell it um, you know, where you want it to go. What that'll do is that'll download the script to your hard drive, which in this situation, I don't think we want. We want to have as little of a presence as possible. So we're gonna use the command IEX, which will execute immediately. Um, new object commandlet net.webclient and then dot download string. So let's go to his GitHub. Let's get the raw text of this uh, PowerShell file. If we try to download this from this link, we'll just get um, we'll get all the HTML code. So what we want is just the raw text of the script. So let's copy that URL. And this will download directly into memory and will not save to the hard disk and then immediately run. Okay, so um, you can see we have all of the options that were mentioned on his website. Let's do a uh, quick reconnaissance first, just to see kind of what this tool offers. Whoa, okay, it's a lot of stuff. Okay, you can see all of my applications. Testing some connections, firewall information. Yeah, you can see that it's showing all of my firewall rules. The, uh, you can see it's showing the protocols the ports that they're running on, um, whether the they're uh, enabled or disabled, and the whether they're the you know the rule whether it's allow or don't allow, and uh, inbound and outbound. Wow. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. If you're a pen tester, you're sure you could glean some very useful information from that. Um, I have a feeling it's going to take a while to go through all of my rules, so I am going to stop it. Let's go back and take a look at some of the information we were able to glean from this reconnaissance. So <laughs> it just shows you all of my installed programs, which is all right. We got a, uh, a failed, I've had this error a few times um, where the query command doesn't work. I think it has something to do with um, running PowerShell in 32 uh, bits. Um, I think there's a 64 bit PowerShell version, which is not commonly used that um, where it, that's only where it would recognize the query command. Uh, we can see the accounts on this computer. You can see we have the real Tim, Tim laptop, and Squibble. Local admin information, privileges information, that seems like some juicy stuff. Group information, current username, network IPs, 
All right, so yeah, this is just like some quick reconnaissance, some useful information if you're a pen tester that you might use to identify a potential vector for exploitation or attack. All right, all right, let's, uh, normally when we run a command in Red Rabbit, it'll ask, ask us if we wanna go back to the main menu, but since I cancel out of this one prematurely, we're going to rerun that last command. Okay, let's, uh, I tried the, um, the option three, the clipboard logger, and unfortunately for my version of Windows, it does not seem to work. Um, I haven't tried it um, recently, but actually, you know, let's just try it. Let's see if it works. Nope, okay, well, yep, still doesn't work. Now we know. All right, let's go back, run that. All right, okay, so we know the clipboard log doesn't work. Let's try uh, option six. So brute force zip. So this will allow us to brute force a password protected zip file. All right, so I have prepared a zip file for you guys. All right, let's zip this up. Add to archive. Call it littlebytes.zip. Let's do a. All right. All right. Just as a kind of a control, let's try to extract it here. Oh, and it wants a password, which we obviously aren't supposed to have at this at this time. All right. Let's cancel that. And then in order to brute force um, a zip file with this tool, you're going to need a word list. So I just downloaded um, from uh, GitHub a word list of the 1,000 most popular passwords and then edit my own password. Okay, so that was in C. Let's check the location C, 10 little bytes. I misspelled the, uh, the name of the file. All right, well, you can see it's gonna take a while. Um, <laughs> it's just literally telling you every single password it's tried on the word list. So we might be here for a moment. Oh, hey. Okay, hey, let's stop it. I saw something. Hold on, let's go back up. Oh, no, never mind. CRC failed an encrypted file. Wrong password, question mark. Okay, I don't know why we quite, why we got like a slightly different error message, but I think it hadn't gotten to the, uh, my password yet. <laughs> there we go. All right. Password found. Cheese concerns for 2069.69. So as you can see, using the word list, it was able to uh, crack the password. All right, let's go in and, uh, well, we're going to want to delete this. Let's go in and extract it. Cheese concerns. Hey, there we go. All right. This is a little uh, nerd joke, if you can get it. All right. Let's go ahead and rerun Red Rabbit. So that worked, that was pretty cool. Um, let's try and doing option 10, which is password extraction. So what this will do is it will just flat out immediately display all of your saved Wi-Fi networks and their corresponding passwords. We can just press enter. All right, so there you go. You can see, uh, well, hopefully you can't see, but I can see all of the um, networks I've ever, I have saved on this computer and their corresponding passwords, which uh, some of them aren't very secure, but they're also not my networks. Yeah, so I think that personally is the most powerful part of this tool. I'm sure there is a sequence of uh, commands you could run in PowerShell yourself um, if you were administrator in order to get this, but um, this is very convenient just to have built into this tool for you. Another option that looked pretty interesting was to encode uh, commands and then also to run the encoded commands. So I'm assuming that uh, encoding the commands will allow you to, in certain instances, bypass antivirus or um, the uh, anti-malware script interface, which is a part of Windows. So let's go ahead and encode a command. Let's just do IP config. Yeah. Okay. So we can see that um, it encoded the command into base64 and we have this string right here. And then let's try running it. Uh, run encoded commands, option 12. There you go. All right. And then we get the IP config command. So it tells us a bunch about our, um, our network uh, adapters. All right. Okay. So those are more or less the most juicy options. 
um, we covered option one and in covering option one we also covered um, option two and option nine um, because that's part of the quick reconnaissance. The clipboard logger unfortunately crashed on us so that doesn't work at the moment at least on my system. Um, we tried the brute force zip which worked excellent uh, excellently. Option 10 password extraction which worked a little too well and then um, we did the uh, encode commands and then the run encoded commands. Now I did try to do some um, administrator encoded commands and then run them not as administrator and I also tried to do a little bit of malware. None of it worked. It, it didn't get past the anti-malware interface that, that Windows has built in and anytime I tried to run an administrator command it still said I had to be an administrator so I'm not particularly sure what types of malware you, I mean, what types of antivirus you're able to evade, but I'm sure there's at least the advantage of, of obfuscating exactly what you're trying to run. So yeah, also the um, option seven, a uh, brute WinRM, that allows you to brute force a remote desktop connection, which um, unfortunately we're not able to uh, demo that today, but that looks like a very interesting option. The OSINT options, um, find subdomain daily pastebin. The daily pastebin, um, what that does is, if you guys don't know, um, pastebin is actually a place where people tend to just dump um, secure information that they've happened upon upon the internet. So that kind of just um, does an automated search for what it thinks might be some juicy information and delivers that to you. For the sake of random people's privacy, I'm not going to select that option, but if you want to, it's there. And yeah, that uh, generally sums up the more juicier options that Red Rabbit gives us. Okay guys, so remember that you need admin privileges in order to use this tool. It's a post-exploitation tool, um, and unfortunately, privilege escalation is a topic for another day. So unfortunately, we couldn't get the clipboard logging feature to work, um, which is a bummer. For my particular version of, of PowerShell and for Windows, it seems to be broken. If you got it to work, go ahead and let me know and tell me what you did differently. If you want to learn more about this topic, go ahead and check out the link to the article in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And um, if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, go ahead and send me a tweet at uh, Tim51092. And uh, we'll see you later. Bye, guys.